Hello folks, Fernando for Unihosted here. Today I'm going to talk about the new default security posture, one of the new features found in the Unified Network application 9.5.21. This is a very good new feature that is going to help you to have a good baseline of security between the Unified networks that you have on your Unified gateway. I'm going to show you how it works and if you want to customize things, how you can do it. So now let's begin. All right, folks, just wanted to show you first in which uh, version number was this new feature released, the default security posture, and it was on the version 9.5.21. For this demo, I'm going to be using this UCG Ultra, a really very good and budget-friendly uh, Unify gateway. Before um, you apply or you want to apply this new feature, please uh, check if it's available with the uh, Unify gateway that you have and if you have all uh, and everything up to date so it's available for you. OK, so let's go to networks and I'm just going to show you what I have here. Um, I have my default network and I created already a VLAN. OK, now here is the default security posture. As you can see here, uh, if we go to the info button, it says this will apply to all segments of the network, including zones, VLANs and interfaces, unless specifically overridden by custom rules. And you have two options, allow all and block all. By default, um, it was on a low all. I already changed this to block all um, and as um, the default option before this existed was actually allow all always. So I think Unify did a, a good thing by giving you this option to, uh, by default, uh, block all the traffic because everything was um, a free for all before. And any network that you created uh, or any new VLAN that you created will have access to any other network unless uh, you had to create a rule there to block things. So I think this is something really, really important that Unify added to their gateways. Other uh, gateways or firewalls, they um, don't allow or unless you specify that you want to allow traffic between them, by default, everything is restricted. OK, so I think this is something really good that Unify did now. This uh, feature uh, not only applies between VLANs, but also applies to Ethernet port profiles. So, for example, if you create an Ethernet port uh, profile, by default, the uh, VLAN IDs won't be tagged on those um, Ethernet ports. So you will need to manually add the or tag the VLANs that you want to pass on that, those uh, ports. Another thing that it's also uh, the same on any other uh, switch um, model or brand, you always had to specify which VLANs you want to add there. Uh, not all the VLANs will be add, added automatically, OK? Something really good for uh, security. So um, just keep in mind that if you activate this, any existing network is not going to change anything. Same thing for uh, ports. Uh, nothing is going to change uh, or the existing ones are not going to be affected, OK? The uh, new VLANs that you create or new networks that you create or new Ethernet port uh, profiles that you create will have this this new feature activated to them but the existing ones won't have anything so let's create a new virtual network over here and i'm going to call it like this with the uh, vlan 20. i'm going to change the uh, subnet to this now if we go to advanced and we click on manual you can see that the isolate network is already added so Basically, this new default security posture, what it's doing is activating this feature by default when you create a network. Um, something that I found, and maybe it's because of my UCG Ultra, is that if I manually change the VLAN ID and then I click Add to create the network, and then I go again to the VLAN or network that I created, the isolate network option is unchecked. Uh, I don't know if this is a bug. I couldn't find anything on the Ubiquiti forums. Um, but if you want that option to stay checked, uh, what you need to do is just create the network. So I'm going to remove this one. Let me create the network again. Change the third octet. And I'm going to leave everything here um, with, but with the defaults. And again, the isolate network option will be checked. So let me just leave that on auto. I'm going to click add. And if I go again to the VLAN, now you can see that the option is still checked. So I don't know if this is some kind of, of bug uh, with this new feature, um, but yeah, you need to do it this way. And now if I change the VLAN ID because I want to use this ID, I can apply the changes and then go back there and I will still have the isolate network option checked. So I think it's some kind of bug, like I mentioned. Um, you can try on your own and see if this happens to you as well. Now, um, since I'm using already this port, with all of my VMs, I have a bunch of VMs that I'm going to be using for uh, to show you this new feature. And if I go here, uh, by default, I'm allowing all the uh, VLANs. But let's say if I want to create an Ethernet port profile, you can see that the uh, tank VLAN management is going to be block all. So instead of allowing all the VLANs like I already have on that port, if I create a new uh, port profile that then I can apply to 
this uh, port is going to be block all. So this is uh, other the or the other feature that uses uh, with this new global default security posture when it's doing the block all. Okay. So I'm gonna close this. I'm not going to use that feature right now. So let's look in the um, zone based firewall. Uh, what we can see there. Uh, what this new feature activated. So if I go here to zones and I have my uh, bill and 20, it's on the internal zone. So I'm just going to click here, uh, internal to internal. Okay. I'm going to click there and I can see now that I have a new policy that says isolated networks. The uh, source zone is the internal and you can see that the VLAN training network is over there. So basically that isolated uh, network uh, check that you have on the networks over there is going to um, block the access from this network, from the one where you checked, to all of your uh, zones. Right now, it only says internal, uh, but if I go, for example, to uh, VPN, I think uh, over here on hotspot, uh, it will show isolated. It's going to do it as well on DMC. If I click on all policies, I can just list uh, for isolated networks. You can see my three um, or three rows and blocking to internal hotspot and DMC. Okay, so basically, if you check that isolated networks, and uh, this was a feature that was added before, even uh, without this global new uh, policy, it's going to create rules for you to block that network, uh, block access to other networks or zones that you have. Okay, alrighty. Now um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a simple uh, ping test and see if it's actually blocking the access uh, to other uh, networks. I'm just going to ping, I have a computer, uh, a VM, sorry, on VLAN 20, and I have two servers on VLAN 30. So let me show you here my uh, virtualizer, my VMware, and let me show you the IP. As you can see, this is a, a Windows 11 VM that I have on the VLAN 20. I have a web server over here and Ubuntu, the one that I always use for my demos. And you can see this is the uh, subnet of the VLAN 30. And I also have this Windows domain controller uh, that is also on the VLAN 30. Okay, so just two VLANs. And uh, I'm going to do a simple ping test and see if this actually works. So let's do this. And the IP of that server is this one. So we can see that the ping is not working. Let me grab the IP of the web server. And I can see is this one. So let's try to access that web server. And if I go here, it's not going to allow me to uh, access that web server or even uh, ping it. So right now that rule is working as expected. Okay. Now let's play uh, with things a little bit. Let's say you want to allow something, uh, something minimal. Okay. And you want to um, allow, for example, I'm going to do something with SMB. Okay. So give me just a moment. Okay, so let me show you in this domain controller, I have a local share that is just called share. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow SMB traffic from the VLAN 20 to uh, VLAN 30, but just that, okay? I'm going to, to do it from here. So let's just go to from uh, in the matrix from internal to internal. I'm going to create a policy called allow SMB to domain controller, okay? Uh, the search zone is going to be uh, internal and I'm going to select a network. And I'm gonna choose here VLAN 20, any port. So I'm gonna allow, and then destination zone is uh, going to be internal as well. Now I just want to um, allow to a specific IP, which is the IP of the domain controller. So it's this one, gonna add this. Now for the port, let's use just SMB. And for the IP version, um, so let's leave that as well. SMB, it's TCP. So we can just uh, leave everything there by default. Okay, we're going to allow as well the uh, return traffic. So right now we can see that the policy was created above isolated networks. Keep in mind that if by any chance the policy is below, um, the isolated networks is not going to work. So if I go to my uh, Windows computer, I should be able to open that share. And you can see that I'm able to open the share but I'm still unable to ping the uh, domain controller. And that's why, because I just created the rule for the SMB uh, traffic, okay? Now again, that network is still isolated and I'm just allowing the uh, SMB traffic from the Windows 11 machine that is on the VLAN 20 to this uh, domain controller that is on the VLAN 30 and uh, it's allowing only SMB traffic. So I can just access this network share. Now let's do the same and for the uh, web server, okay? So let me go here. I'm gonna create a policy and allow. Oh, I think it's uh, HTTP. So let me uh, choose here the network. Let me choose the network over here. Any port we are going to allow. Destination zone is going to be internal as well. 
and this is the IP of that web server. And let's add HTTP. And we are going to leave everything there as default. And let's add the policy. Now oh, we're just missing there <laughs> that when you need to add the IP. Okay. Now we can see it says allow HTTP and it's also above the isolated networks rule. So if I try to ping that server, it shouldn't work. But if I go to the web and I want to open, should be able to see and yep, you can see it's there. This is the web server that I always use for all demos. Okay. So again, I'm restricting access to the entire network and just allowing uh, what I want. An SMB share, really simple, and this HTTP um, connection. Okay, so let's go back here and as you can see, I have the two roles over here. Alrighty, so that's it. Uh, basically, as you can see, um, this new feature helps you to have a very good baseline of security, especially if you have multiple uh, VLAN networks and you don't want to be uh, playing a lot with roles and you don't know what to restrict. This is like a restrict everything and then you can play around and add just what you want. Remember to um, uh, have a good management of roles and if you have things uh, if you create rules, they need to be above the isolated networks. And the other thing to remember that I didn't modify anything is that if you create any kind of new Ethernet profile, you will need to manually tag the VLAN uh, IDs to those ports after you create the new, uh, after, after you, that you activate the new default security posture with the block all feature. Okay. Alrighty. So that's it for the tests. All right, folks, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, tips, or maybe requests for any new videos, just drop them in the comment section below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications for the new upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next Uni-hosted video. Bye-bye.